What's up, you guys? Void here coming back at you all with another video. If you like my content, please remember to hit the subscribe button and like this video. Share it with your friends. Appreciate all the support I've been getting. Just wanted to talk about Exelon as a set and its impact on Standard. Through all the tournaments lately, the Pro Tour qualifiers, things like that, we have the gist of what cards are going to see play. And usually the prices fluctuate even more once we hit the Pro Tour and after the Pro Tour uh, see who, see what decks top and see just the total impact of everything. Right now the most expensive card in the whole set is Carnage Tyrant, about $25 Mythic Rare and a lot of people think it's justified, a lot of people think it's going to go down. I am in the camp that thinks it's going to go down significantly. I can definitely see this card settling at around $10. It is a good card, it is a good creature, but I just don't really feel like it does enough. It is uncounterable and it does have Hexproof, which is a big deal. There's a lot of removal, it gets around Hour of Devastation. As far as board wipes go, it doesn't get around the 4 mana white exile all creatures that are attacking spell. It doesn't get around that, which is about the only thing that could deal with it. Uh, but other than actual just combat, there's really nothing that can deal with it. You have Walk the Plank is a pretty good uncommon that's probably going to be the black removal card of choice now. We have Cast Out, which is always good. You have the cycling option. And then you have Ixalan's Binding, which should see some more play probably within the next year. Keeping an opponent from casting the same spell with the same name. That's pretty devastating in standard where there's four ofs, obviously. Also right now we have just a ton of blue-black being bought out. And then we have Hostage Taker, which for pre-release week was about six, seven dollars around that mark. Now it has doubled. It's around fifteen to sixteen dollars. Absolutely insane. A lot of people are going into blue-black now. I don't know if it's necessarily for pirates, it's more or less just for control. Uh, I see it in Sultai Energy decks now, you see it in Esper decks. So it's definitely a good control card and a lot of these creatures have typically done pretty well in standard. Uh, if we look back at cards like Banisher Priest, when you can effectively take away a creature of theirs and get a creature at the same time, that's a good use of mana and it's multi-purposed. A pretty good card. I could definitely see the Hostage Taker sort of holding its price for the time being. Control is so important. We have bigger creatures. We have Glory Bringers are still a big deal. Dinosaurs looking like they're going to have a presence in standard for the next two years it looks like. There's some good cards there. You have Ripjaw Raptor. A uh, good way to draw cards and it's good value for four mana. You get a four or five body. So really my advice would be to get rid of your Carnage Tyrants while you can. I don't see this card having an impact in standard. Aside from dinosaur decks, maybe green red dinosaur decks, Naya dinosaur decks, and it's usually no more than a two of. I haven't seen any deck that plays four of it. Uh, for what it does, it's a good creature, but it doesn't really do anything else except for just it's a trampler. And yeah, it can't be targeted, but big deal. You can always beat it out in combat. Overall, Carnage Tyrant just isn't that complex of a card. To me, the cards that make the biggest waves in standard are ones that are a little bit more complex, they have different synergies, they typically are multi-purpose. This is very linear. We're talking about combat here, and I, I don't know if dinosaurs are going to have a big impact. We know they will. There's just a ton of good ones. We have Ripjaw Raptors, you have uh, the Ferocidon, the three-mana red dude with Menace that pings players whenever creatures enter the battlefield. That's going to be good against tokens. For what it does in standard, it's just a big body that has trample. It's a 7-6, it's going to push in for extra damage, but there's better dinosaurs, honestly. The Ripjaw Raptor's better. Uh, you have a lot of people now buying the Death Gorge Scavenger because of its uh, similarities to Scavenging Ooze. And you also have Kinjali Sunwing, which might actually see more play. Those Imposing Sovereign type effects are always pretty decent and standard. Uh, it's good for tempo. It's just good for control as well. So all those dinosaurs are multi-purpose. They kind of do something different. The Ferocidon pings your opponents for damage. The Death Gorge Scavenger can deal with creatures in graveyards. Ripjaw can give you card draw when it's dealt damage. You know, those have multiple purposes. The Carnage Tyrant's just a big body. So it can help push in for damage, but that's about it. Now, when I look at other cards that are similar to this, I think of something like a Glory Bringer. It's a good card, it's settled around $5. It sees pretty much all of its play in Teamer Energy decks. It's perfect for that. It has haste, it gets in there, it can exert itself, get rid of a creature. Pretty good value. And even that has multiple purposes and it's settling around the $5 mark. So it's a key piece of that deck. 
is Carnage Tyrant a key piece of dinosaur decks? Absolutely, I think so. So it being $25 to me is a bit too much. I could definitely see it settling around the $8 mark, $10 mark, something around there. By no means should you invest in this card. It's not something that, it, it's not wise, not right now. If you already have them, sell them, trade them, get your value for it while you can. I just don't see this post Pro Tour being at the same value. To me, cards like Hostage Taker are having a bigger impact. Blue Black is looking like it's gonna have a bigger impact in standard than Carnage Tyrant is. Pay attention to Op as well, it's another good card. It's about a 50 cent common. A lot of people are buying it for different reasons, mainly because of Modern. A lot of people are looking to add that to their Storm decks, uh, help speed that deck up. Could use another good Cantrip, especially since Getaxian Probe got banned. And also, it's a good card to just fill into your control decks for Standard. It's a good Cantrip. Then you have Charter Course, a 2-mana blue sorcery that you get to draw 2 cards and then discard a card unless you attack with a creature this turn. So it's essentially just another raid trigger for pirate decks if you want to go that route. Yet another good cantrip. And you have Unclaimed Territory, which is going to synergize with a lot of these tribal themed decks if you want to go merfolk, dinosaurs, pirates, vampires. You have a good land. I wouldn't say it's like Aether Hub, but... Any synergy that you can have in your land base, it's always going to be pretty good. Then the search for Escanta is another good card that a lot of people are buying now. Usually upkeep deck manipulation is pretty decent, and it does flip into something that can continue to manipulate your deck, but in enchantment form, it's pretty decent. And of course, Walk the Plank is going to have its own impact on the format as well. And then we have Siren Storm Tamer, about a $1 uncommon, that's a 1-1 one, one flyer for 1 blue mana. You can pay the blue to sacrifice it to counter target spell or ability that targets you or a creature you control. So it's pretty valuable. You can definitely see it in modern. But I wouldn't be surprised to see some sort of janky uh, mono blue flyer deck in standard. I think it's definitely the way to go if you want to make waves in this format. You can't really go with the net decks. You can't really go with what the majority of people are playing. So you got to kind of diversify your own deck. I personally like blue-white control, but not really the blue-white control that is currently in standard right now. I typically want to make more of a anti-meta type of deck that's going to deal with the best decks, and usually you fill those decks with a bunch of flyers, uh, evasion, uh, creatures that are capable of dealing with their creatures, uh, counter spells, just removal spells that are capable of dealing with non-creature permanents. That's how you make big waves in standard. You have to prepare for the meta. And we have Raska's Contempt, which is very similar to Hero's Downfall. It is 4 mana though, but you do get to exile a creature or planeswalker and you gain 2 life. That's just going to be good removal. Likely going to be a 1 of the 2 of in most Esper control decks, uh, Sultai control decks. So overall, I would say that Exelon has had a very good impact. The cards seem to be worth more money because we don't have any of those big uh, lottery type cards, the Masterpieces. Those really just destroyed the value of the rest of the cards in the sets they're in, and it made it it made it difficult, especially when we're talking about Ahmed Cat, for cards to sort of go up in price because people are just going to buy it in boatloads so that they can get the masterpieces. Whereas with this set, people are buying it because uh, they want to draft it because they want to get a lot of the cards to build their standard decks. So you don't really have that appeal of getting a masterpiece, an invocation, anything like that. So a lot of the cards are going to hold their value pretty well. This is also true for the future, in Rivals of Ixalan, probably with Dominaria. We're not going to have any more of these Masterpiece sets for a while, I feel. Uh, and that's a, good, that's a good move there. I mean, I can understand why they did Masterpieces. They wanted to uh, insert some more value and incentivize people to buy these boxes. Overall, I feel like Masterpieces was sort of their way of bailing out their set. They didn't have to put as much creativity into the set if they could just reprint cards as Masterpieces. It would get people to buy their boxes, which is true. A lot of people bought these boxes for the expeditions, for the inventions, for the invocations. Where you have this lottery card, it's going to incentivize people to buy more of your product. And that's not necessarily good if you want to encourage R&D to make better cards. So overall, I think it's, it's definitely a good move on their part to go back to just making good quality cards for standard, uh, for limited maybe for modern and that's really the way to go but anyway guys hope you enjoyed this video remember to subscribe 
Void here signing off. You all have a wonderful day.